there are certain days in your gaming experience that you'll just like never forget. For me, the first day like that was December 25th, 1995. It was a day that changed everything for me forever. I received a Sony PlayStation console on that day. My brother and I got that shiny new console. We tore the box open and we had Street Fighter Alpha sitting there ready for us to play and enjoy this new three-dimensional experience. Now, entering that third dimension for the first time, man, I remember playing games like Ridge Racer Revolution, Resident Evil 2, Parasite Eve, man. There were so many incredible games that took you to a place for the first time. This was a huge jump. This was probably the biggest jump in gaming history. And recently, I picked up a couple consoles. I have my PlayStation Vita. I have my PlayStation Portal. And I realized, I realized, hey, I have now owned every single PlayStation console there has ever been. Well, not every, not every version, not every version of every console, but I've had all the main consoles and every handheld now. And because of that, I would like to break down my personal tier list of every PlayStation console there has been to this date. Now, this is a personal tier list, of course. This is my tier list, but I have come with facts. I've come with facts, numbers, best games, top selling games, and I will be utilizing that to give y'all a little bit of coloring as to which consoles I believe are the absolute cream of the crop and then which ones are just kind of, you know, just okay. So let's jump into this shit. So let's go ahead and start where it all began with the original Sony PlayStation released on 9-9-1995 for it was a fifth generation console and Sony's very first console. Um, there were a few different models released for this console. Of course, you had the major, the original fat PlayStation, which my brother and I had a PlayStation magazine smiley face sticker on the lid. But you also had the PS1, which eventually came with an LCD screen that you could couple with it and would basically make it one of the first like portable full size consoles, I guess. Kind of weird because uh, we wouldn't see a truly portable device from Sony for still some time. Now, I will tell you one device that I was super interested in growing up but never actually saw in the wild, and that was the Net Yurazi. I remember seeing stuff about this in magazines and being like, wait, I can make my own PlayStation games? Like, I thought that was the craziest shit. I feel like it was blue, like a navy blue. I remember seeing it in a PlayStation magazine and being like, bro, I could be a developer, that's crazy. And it's wild that they've never opened up a development kit like that since, but over 102 million units sold. It was the first console ever to sell over 100 million units. Best selling game was Gran Turismo with I think 8 million copies sold, which is crazy. The top three highest rated games according to Metacritic for the PlayStation 1 were Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Tekken 3 and Gran Turismo. Now, I sat down and I tried to think, what are my top three favorite games for the Sony PlayStation? Number one, Sweet in 2, probably my all time favorite game ever. Symphony of the Night, Final Fantasy 7, but I mean, my God, I could go on forever. Games like Einhander, games like, man, Brave Fencer Musashi, Resident Evil 2 and 3, Parasite Eve, Final Fantasy Tactics, Metal Gear Solid, Ridge Racer Type 4. I mean, my God, it was like an embarrassment of riches. It was where I found my love for the Japanese role playing game and uh, still stands as one of my all time favorite consoles. So, yeah, starting out with the original, the original. Man, now the real question is, starting off with the first Sony PlayStation, it can only be one of two options. It's either classic 
or goaded, period. There's no other choice here for this. It's tough because I know what's coming up. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and put it in goaded. I just feel like because it was such an important moment, such an important console and still has my very favorite game of all time. Sweet it in two. Yeah, goaded for sure. 100% goaded. Game changer, game changing console. One of the best and still stands the test of time with many great games that hold up. Now, part of me wanted to put it a little bit lower only because 3D PlayStation graphics have not aged the best. So I did think about putting it as just a classic, but you can't dock it too much. It was the first of its kind. So now next up, we have the Sony PlayStation 2, which was released on October 26th. 2000 in the United States. It's considered a sixth generation console. It is still the highest selling console of all time with over 155 million units sold. That is absolutely fucking bonkers. It had a couple major revisions. You had the normal PlayStation 2, which is the one that my brother and I owned. And then you had the Slim, which I always thought was like a really dope looking streamlined console. The best selling game on the console, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, which <laughs> you'll see is a running theme with these, was 17 million copies sold. That's bonkers too. The three highest rated games on the console according to Metacritic are Tony Hawk 3, Grand Theft Auto 3, and Resident Evil 4. Now, my three personal favorite games for the PS2, man, this one was tough too. This one was really tough. These first two consoles were where I was doing probably like the most amount of my gaming ever. The generation prior with the SNES and the Sega Genesis was also a big one for me, but the PlayStation 1 and 2 were the years where not only did I play video games, but I also have my own money. I could start buying my own games. I could start contributing to get the stuff that I wanted. And uh, because of that, these were two very, very, very important consoles in my life. Um, so those three personal favorites, SSX Tricky for sure is up there. Um, Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal and uh, Devil May Cry 3. I just think Devil May Cry 3 was such a monumental game for me that it's hard to put anything else above it. But man, you had Tekken 5, you had NBA Street, you had Final Fantasy 10, you had Twisted Metal Black, one of the probably still the best car combat game of all time. I mean, so many more. Eco, ah, fuck. Just keep naming them. There's 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 almost too many. There's almost too many great games on this console. Now the real toughness, I, what I don't want to do is just put the PS1, PS2, just like all GOAT. I think there needs to be some sort of distinction. And is the PlayStation 1 a superior console to the PS2 is what this really comes down to. Because I think one's got to go in classic and one's got to go in GOAT. Um, I will say that the PlayStation 2 games have generally aged better outside of the two dimensional games. Uh, the games that are 2D on the PlayStation 1 have held up well, but the 3D games have not. I would say PlayStation 2, there's enough power there and enough maturity in the style of graphics that I believe that the PlayStation 2 between its graphics and how they've held up between the feel of the games because it finally kind of figured out 3D cameras a little bit more um, between what the DualShock 2 was to controlling games. That plus the 155 million units sold. <sighs> All right, guys. When the rubber meets the road, I got to make a little switch. I'm going to put the PS1 as a classic. The PS1, 100% a classic, but the PS2 is goaded. 
It is goated. Has to be. Has to be. Now, with that said, we're going to move on to Sony's first portable console, uh, the PlayStation Portable, which I owned a silver 3000 variant. I loved that thing. My most played game of all time was actually on the PSP, and that was Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. I put probably about 600 hours into Freedom Unite. One of the most fun games to just keep running over and over again. And this console came out when I was in my late teens into my early 20s. So it was like that perfect time period, needed something on the go for school. And it was great to play between classes. And I kept up on stuff that way. This console was released March 24th, 2005 in the United States. It was considered a seventh generation console and was, like I said, the first handheld released by Sony. There were quite a few variants of this console. You had the classic PSP, which we'll just say encompasses all of the standard variations, the 1000, 2000, and 3000 variant, which had slight changes, but were all generally the same thing. But you also had the PSP Go, uh, which I always thought looked super cool, but the screen was much smaller. And if I remember, it also worked as a cell phone. Like you can make calls on your PSP, which looked awkward as fuck. So I never got it, but cool idea. It was like a clamshell design as well, if if I'm not mistaken. Very cool design, but lost a lot of the uh, the swagger of the PSP. And then you had the PSP Street, which I do not remember at all. I only figured this thing's existence out when I was kind of doing research to prep for this and. It's a weird looking console. It seems like it's like the cheap variant of the PSP right at the end of its lifespan and wasn't really a particularly impressive console. But the PSP actually sold over 80 million copies, which is kind of crazy considering I believe it was going up against the Nintendo DS at the time, which was just an absolute fucking juggernaut. The best selling game on the console was <laughs> once again, Grand Theft Auto was Liberty City with 8 million copies sold. And the top three highest rated games on the console were Chain of Olympus, the God of War game, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, which was actually uh, higher rated than Liberty City, and Persona 3 Portable, which is a game I motherfucking love. So I uh, have to still check out the remaster. Now my personal top three, this was also a really difficult one to really parse out because there's so many different dope types of games on the console. It really had a little bit of everything for everybody. But my three that I had to go to were Luminous, uh, Jean Dark, and Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions. I put a lot of hours into War of the Lions and I love the ad hoc where you could play with other people uh, and against other people. It was a really cool experience to do like cooperative Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, also, they added my man Balthier from FF12. So dope, dope, dope. But then you also had Freedom Unite. You had Crisis Core. Um, also for me, Persona 3 Portable was up there. Patapon. I mean, my God, there was so much to play on the PSP. Still got to be Sony's best portable console. I don't want to bury the lead, but it's just like it was the perfect time period. Like I said, I was in college and I was on the go a lot and I wasn't around my console as much, but I had homies that also had PSPs and we'd ad hoc up and play different games. And it was so much fun to have this relatively powerful console in your hand um, and able to play it anywhere you want it. So I wouldn't say that the PSP is goaded because while it is an incredible console, it didn't change the game. Looking back at what Sony has done since, didn't really create a whole new lane for them. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in 
classic. We'll say it's a classic still. I do believe that it's a classic console. It gave us so many great games, both new and old, but it wasn't the game changer or the permanent fixture that one might have hoped that a portable PlayStation would become in the years after. So definitely a classic, can't do better than that. Definitely not better than the PlayStation 1. Now, next up, we have the PlayStation 3, which was released November 17th, uh, 2006. Considered a seventh generation console. This had a few major variants as well. You had the uh, the fat, which was that, that, that big belly bitch. I mean, it was like mm, very curvy. That was the version that my brother and I had. We had a fat. You also had the uh, PS3 Slim. Lost a little weight, got a little, you know, cut up. And then you had the PS3 Super Slim, where it just probably lost a little too much weight, uh, you know. Slipped into some hard times, we'll say. Had some had some uh, booger sugar, you know. Ended up in the gutter a little bit, but. The PS3 uh, still stands as like Sony's worst selling console at, at least with the totality the ps3 sold a little over 87 million consoles probably around 87 and a half their best-selling game though <laughs> just thrashes everything else so far grand theft auto 5 sold 34 million copies when you think about that i have to check to make sure that's only playstation copies because that seems crazy i i didn't think about that it was a multi-console release but even if it's not that's insane that would mean like almost one in every two or three people that own the console owned grand theft auto 5 absolutely bonkers and we were one of them i didn't play it but my brother did now the top three rated games two of them <laughs> two of them are grand theft auto related there was Grand Theft Auto 4, Grand Theft Auto 5, and then Uncharted 2 was the third highest rated game according to Metacritic. Now, my personal three favorite games, you know what? I was scrolling back through, uh, I was I was looking through all of the stuff um, that came out on this console, and this was probably the hardest one to really decide. Um, Arkham City, definitely one. Dead Space 2 number two and street fighter three which i know is a much older game but i played a hell of a lot on the console now you might figure out from just how kind of sparse my love for this console talking about it is but this is about where i started to fall out of love with gaming a little bit actually a lot of bit let's let's not mince words here i fell out of love with gaming I had started to do different things. I was making music, I was performing, I was doing shows places and collaborating. I was training martial arts probably more than ever, lifting more and more. And I just had more of a social life beyond my gaming as friends moved away uh, and they themselves stopped gaming as much. PlayStation 3 was a very, barren time for me as far as playing games as far as being a gamer this was my lowest point in that valley so with all that said you know and also let us not forget that the playstation 3 is the only console that definitively sony lost sony lost to microsoft for the first time definitively you know you can have arguments about other generations and the placement of the playstation brand versus the microsoft brand but there was a reason that this console kind of floundered it sold much less than the playstation one and two in the playstation 2's case it sold half and it barely outsold the playstation portable which is obviously a much more niche product with all that said with me not playing games as much not having as much interaction with gaming, not being much of a gamer during this time period. 
I'm going to have to go ahead and put this one in. Bleh. Bleh. I hated that look of that generation with the muddy textures and all that. Um, I hated the price tag. It was way too expensive, way too expensive. That was probably the death knell charging $5.99 back in fucking the the early 2010s was absolutely bonkers the fat was just so stupid looking i never liked the look of the console it wasn't as iconic as the prior consoles that just had a style and a look to them and yeah i'm gonna say it might be the only bleh that's on here um because the rest of the consoles all have their ups and downs but I would just say that the PS3 is kind of unequivocally their worst console so far. Um, we'll see how the PS5 plays out, but to me, that's just where I'm at with that. Now the PS Vita, as I just mentioned, I just got this thing um, about two, three months ago. And so I did not have one back when it was first released, which just was released on February 22nd, 2012, it's considered an eighth generation console. There are a few major variants. There's the normal, which I have. I believe this is the uh, the original original with the classic OLED screen. And then there was a slim, which was a smaller variant. And then the PSTV, which was like a non portable Vita, which seems kind of weird, <laughs> like your portable device, it's almost like Sony admitting defeat with it. You know, they're like, this ain't working out. Um, sales, man, sales for the Vita were not good. Somewhere in the 15 to 16 million range with its best-selling game, only selling 1.4 million copies, which was Uncharted Golden Abyss, which I believe was just like a side story type of thing. So not even directly related. Um, it's top three highest rated games, Persona 4 Golden, Velocity 2X, and Spelunky. Persona 4 Golden is something I definitely plan on playing soon. Velocity 2X I've, I've heard is great and I've fired it up on the Vita for a little bit, um, but haven't gotten very far into it. And then Spelunky is a classic that I have actually not played. It's one of the few indie games that I mentioned on my uh, indie tier list that I had missed out on. So all that said, I haven't played my Vita very much. So I ask you guys, what should my top three favorite games be on this console? Tell me what to play. Maybe I'll play it for the channel and do a nostalgia. So what are your favorite PS Vita games? And I'll go ahead and give them a try. So as you can see on our little tier here, there is a fifth spot and that is called hmm and that is reserved for consoles that I feel like it's a little up in the air still so I'm gonna go ahead and put the Vita in I don't know because this was kind of a dark period for Sony um, I think their mistake was putting the PS Vita out so close to the PS4 and kind of in this no man land with the PS3, which did not do particularly well. I think this console generation was just a tough one, tough one. Even though the Vita is considered um, an, an eighth generation console, really is more closer to seventh gen uh, alongside the PS3, which have nearly a six year gap. So that's where that confusion comes in. Now, next up, we have a very important console to me, uh, the PlayStation 4. Now the PlayStation 4 released on November 15th, 2013. It is considered an eighth generation console with over 117 million units sold. That makes it, uh, let me see, the second highest selling Sony console of all time. There were a few different variants. Uh, the normal one, which is the one that I had. The PlayStation 4 Slim, which was much slicker, 
than the OG and for the first time kind of set the precedent going forward we had the PlayStation 4 Pro which was the first console that provided a hardware upgrade beyond just the standard slimming things down maybe taking some ports away this was actually technically a different console it had upgraded specs and additional um, perks alongside the original you could run things at 60 frames per second you could do all this other shit that previously uh didn't exist so now the best-selling game on the console was spider-man with 20 million units sold and i absolutely love that game not really a huge open world guy but damn i love spider-man it was probably the first game that really captured that arkham city vibe for me though my brother keeps telling me i gotta play mad max and with furiosa just coming out maybe now's better time than ever to give it a go so now the top three highest rated games on the console what's the over under that one of them includes grand theft auto yeah it's on there we got red dead redemption 2 grand theft auto 5 and persona 5 royal now my personal top three favorite games on the console number one is the game that actually brought me back to gaming when i got my ps4 uh christmas of i want to say it was 2014 my homie got me a used copy of this game i popped it in i actually played it for about 15 hours bounced off of it i got to a boss that was just too difficult put it down came back fresh about i don't know seven months later and i've beaten it three times since then that game is Bloodborne, number one favorite PS4 game of all time, personally. God of War, uh, the 2018 one, is my second favorite. And then, actually, Shadow of the Colossus, the remaster, I, or rather, the remake. I had never played it on any previous consoles, so this was the first time I played it. So that's personally why I chose it. When I chose my top three i tried to choose games that were played originally for me on that console so that's why you don't see things like celeste and hades because i actually played them first on steam now i did play near automata on ps4 which i love journey was my first time playing it since i didn't really play it on playstation 3. this was my personal renaissance this is what brought me back to consoles and i feel like for many of us, this is kind of a common thing. You play a lot of games as a kid. You might even play a lot of games as a teenager, but eventually life starts going and then all of a sudden career and everything else is more important. But then boom, you have time again and something ropes you back in. Something brings you back into gaming. And for me, it was Bloodborne and then all the subsequent games that came after that really, 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 really are the reason why I'm sitting here with this channel now. It's all been part of the synergy, but the PlayStation 4, without it, I don't know if I'd be a gamer the way I am right now in 2024. And because of that, I gotta salute the PS4. Because of that, for me personally, because this tier list is ultimately my tier list so yeah between its sales between its cultural value and its personal value to me as a gamer coming back to gaming i think this is the other goat for me so ps4 means a lot it's a really great console and i believe that it was super necessary after kind of how the PS3 and the PS Vita went for Sony. They needed this. They bounced back and they bounced back hella. They bounced back hella. This was a huge, huge, huge moment for them and ultimately led them to the modern day where the PS5 was released here in the States. Actually, it was released worldwide um, November 19th. 
2020. And if y'all remember, 2020, finding a PS5 was a bitch. I got lucky. I actually got mine in February of 2021. I had been looking like everybody else. And then I hopped on my local Best Buy's website thinking after weeks of trying, then I'd finally given up. So I'm like, ah, let me just look real quick. And the Best Buy, about eight miles from me, had them in stock. I literally put it in my cart, didn't even have my Best Buy um, checkout stuff ready because I just, this was on a whim. I, I had no faith that I was gonna get this thing. So I had to go get my credit card, put the info in, send that email that allows you to log in to your Best Buy. I had to wait for that email, put the code in, log in. I'm thinking, hell no, nah, this cart's gone. This is gone. But it was pickup only. So I guess bots don't like pickup only. And I got the console. Easy peasy. It went through. And I was like, did I just buy a PS5? And I had it at my house about uh, a week later when I went to pick it up. So anyway, it is a ninth generation console. There are currently two major variants. There's the classic PS5, which I have discless, and then the PS5 Slim, which I've actually been thinking like, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should cop that. So we'll see. Over 60 million units sold so far. So it's already well on pace to sell more than the PS3 over its lifetime, even with all the difficulties um, getting them out the door at first. It's current top three highest rated games, Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate 3, and oddly enough, The Witcher 3, the uh, complete edition. Now, my personal top three on the console, Returnal. I love Returnal, one of the most slept on exclusives, probably in Sony's whole catalog. Um, love Returnal, play it if you haven't. Ghost of Tsushima was actually my first game that I played. I had it on PS4 and I held off. I said, let me just hold off and play this on PS5. And I'm so glad I did because that opening scene at 60 frames per second, it was just beautiful. It's just like coming, man, I get chills even thinking about it. So good, so good. And then uh, my third favorite was It Takes Two. Maybe the best like cooperative playing game outside of something like Mario Kart 8 that I've ever played. It's so good. It's so much fun to play with someone else. Um, I highly recommend it with a friend, with whoever you can get to play it. It's incredible. The PS5, I play it primarily um, for the channel. It's a great console to me but I feel like it still has a lot to prove. And if I'm being completely impartial, <laughs> uh, despite this Sony PlayStation t-shirt that I have on right now, I think it's still like in this, it's good, but it's not great mode. I would love to see more really good exclusives. I would love to see more just top tier products. And I know it had a stumble out the gate like most did during COVID, just having a hard time getting consoles out the door. But we're well past that now. And I believe that they got to step it up over these next couple years. Well, it'll be interesting to see if we have a PlayStation 5 Pro or what happens next. So currently, as it stands, I'm going to have to put the PlayStation 5 right in the middle. I chose seven out of 10 because I know it has such like a weird connotation with the IGN scores. But at the end of the day, a seven out of 10 means something is good, just not incredible. It's 70% in most fields would be like, yeah, you did your job. It's doing its job. I feel like the PlayStation 5 is doing its job. It is doing it adequately, above adequate. I've really enjoyed it. I love the dual sense. Um, haptic feedback kind of changed the game in a lot of ways, but I just feel like much like the smartphone market consoles are kind of hitting a critical mass. And this is a 
workhorse of a console for me. There's a lot of great games to play on it, but less and less of them seem to be um, specific to the console. Oh, and the best selling game was Spider-Man 2 with 11 million. So that's two consoles in a row where Spider-Man has been the best selling game. So definitely play those. I have to play the second one and I have to play Miles. So we'll get to that soon. Finally, I threw this one up. You may have seen it poof magically appear out of a fucking portal. The last one I want to talk about is the PlayStation Portal, which I do have right here. This Batarang looking bitch. Um, surprisingly comfortable to hold. I thought this was going to suck to hold and like be awkward and weird, but actually super comfy. It's considered a ninth generation console. I'm almost cheating even having it on here because it's not really a console. It's just a, a uh, remote player. It released last year, uh, November 15th, 2023. Now, I tried to look through numerous articles for this. Couldn't really find very specific numbers as far as sales go. Um, I know they were sold out always for quite a while. So clearly Sony sold more than they were anticipating, but no sales numbers. Hard to put this in a ranking, obviously. My personal use case for it was I want to get more games finished while I'm while I'm playing for the channel. So I got it because it's nice. I can sit on the couch. I can um, work on finishing games while doing other shit, literally, <laughs> in some cases. Um, so for me, it's great. But keep in mind, this console is barely a console. It is a remote player. And that is it. That is it. So I am going to put this in. It's hard to put it in the think face because I know what it does and I know what it's going to do. And it's hard to put it in bled because it's playing the games that I'm asking of it. I feel like it belongs right next to its uh, to its cousin, the PlayStation 5, because it allows me to play PS5 games and it allows me to play all the games that are on my console. It's essentially just an extension of my PS5. So with that said, it's just kind of like it's on. And that's why it's going in seven out of 10 with its brother, cousin, whatever the fuck you would call the portal to the PlayStation 5. Uh, nephew? Maybe it's his nephew. I don't know their relation, but now do you agree with these ratings? Um, the only one that I'm the only one that I'm not a thousand percent sold on is the PlayStation one. It's 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 tough to only put in classic because it does feel like a goat, but I feel like it is a step down from the PS2 and for me personally, the PS4. Um, but it is the most classic of all consoles to me outside of maybe the Sega Genesis. So true classic just doesn't have the 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 legs due to the awkward introduction to 3D that it brought in a lot of ways, but I look back very fondly on it and there's still so many great games that I play from it and that I still love. So all time classic, but the PS2 for me personally stands as Sony's greatest console, not just because of what it sold, but because of what it stood for and what it ushered in. PlayStation 4 brought me back. PlayStation 1 brought me into the fold. The PSP kind of kept me going in gaming when I otherwise wouldn't have been able to. The PS5 has done its job. It's been a soldier, but it hasn't blown me away still yet. PlayStation Portal is its daughter. Fuck, I don't know. The PS3 was where I fell out of love with it and Sony stumbled quite a bit with the console, both from a critical uh, narrative as well as sales. So I believe it's the only bleh console in the Pantheon. 
And then the uh, PS Vita. No, it was a tough extension of the woes that the PS3 brought, but because I haven't had a lot of experience and time with its games and messing around with it yet, I had to put that in a thing. So definitely let me know what I should do with the Vita. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like, shoot a subscribe, and most importantly, comment down below and let me know what your favorite PlayStation console is and why, and what are some of your ones that you think you might have some hot takes on? Cause I'd love to hear uh, your, your hot takes and see if there's any consoles that we agree with or disagree on. So as always, thanks for watching. Peace. Peace.